Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petiti Garden Centers and it's spring and plants have arrived, thank goodness. And so we're gonna take you through a tour of our Oakwood Village store. And right here you see some beautiful English daisies. These are all Bellis daisies. So in the perennial department, you start to see really bright spring color. It's usually the English Bellis daisies and it's also the brightly colored primrose across the way. Um, so they always come up, they enjoy the cool temperatures, um, but they, they look so great in spring. And of course, as we go here, Angela wanted me to mention salad bowls. Are you ready to get your leaf lettuce? Um, you can start your leaf lettuce no problem outside right now in containers, but we have them ready to grow for you, ready to eat for you, I guess, is really what you wanna do. And basically what you can do is just take some clean scissors and just pick the leaves, or you can literally just snap the leaves with your fingers. In the morning, it's the best time to harvest, but go ahead and harvest as many lettuce leaves as you need. And then of course, bulbs are coming out. And these are all of your like forced spring bulbs, if you will. So hyacinths, tulips, daffodils, they're all really pushing up and looking really, really nice. And then as we keep going, there are a lot of violas that are a hardy viola, true perennial viola. So do look for those, lots of different colors here. And this one's my favorite, this is Etain. Etain is really, really fragrant, wonderful, um, sweet smelling, really, really great. As we keep going down, we've got some other ground covers. This is saxifraga and it's such a cool ground cover, um, kind of like a rock garden plant or alpine plant, comes in white, comes in pink, but obviously very compact, um, sort of a little bit of a succulent foliage there, but they love to be outside at this time of year. Oh gosh, and the daisies are up. Um, this is an early daisy, but I'm gonna tell you Freak, we've talked about this before. Freak is just big flowering, really, really sort of um, shredded and kind of roughly petal, but um, talk about it has really popped up and is blooming really nicely. We'll keep going here. And another sign of spring, of course, are the dianthus. And the dianthus, these are all perennial dianthus. Sometimes they're called cottage pink. Sometimes we refer to them as like um, hardy carnations. You'll see them in all different colors here, but some of the doubles are just absolutely gorgeous very very compact most of these newer varieties of dianthus they are repeat bloomers so as they're kind of spent about 75 percent you're going to cut them back real low and get them to rebloom for you give them a little bit of fertilizer liquid fertilizer or even some osmocote and they'll pop back up and give you another bloom cycle okay as we keep going i love this little pink guy Pink drumsticks are actually called armeria and or sea thrift. They are a really great plant to plant at the base of like a mailbox. They're very, very salt tolerant. They're very drought tolerant. Just really fun, repeat blooming. Love these guys. Ah, and the columbine. So the columbine are in. Um, they are a great early season pollinator plant. Beautiful in sunny part shade gardens, um, just at the edge of a woodland. That's where I always like to see them, but really, really great. And the hummingbirds love them too. We're out in the nursery at Oakwood Village and you can see Taylor's gonna pan. We've got fruit trees here. We've got ornamental trees here, um, shade trees here. The only thing is they're still very much just trunks and branches um, so it's that early out but you know what if your soil is draining and you can get out there and dig guess what you can plant trees now as well so that's a great sign of spring um, is here and then if we check out the carts i'm looking at all these beautiful blue hollies um, blue princess blueprints um, this one's beautiful this is red beauty down below She's got kind of a pyramidal habit, real tight, um, really, really kind of spiny. So do watch, but really beautiful as far as the red berries are concerned. Really pretty female there. As you can tell, we're walking past some barberries 
and you can see just their stems just barely starting to peek out here with barberries. If you do have barberries out in your landscape, you can prune them when they're just starting to peak and produce that little, sometimes Angela calls it a bead or a pearl, just when they're starting to push out that new growth, you can start pruning them back pretty low. We're gonna keep walking in the nursery here and um, just watching some of the nine bark just slowly start to fill out. It's gonna start coming, but there are little tiny little buds on those stems. We've got blueberries as well, and you can start to see them just leaf out. Taylor will probably take a close up for you um, as they get going. So again, in March and going into April, if it's dry enough and you can dig in your soil without it being really wet and compacted and clumpy, swampy even, um, you're ready to go, you're ready to plant. And then also check out all the boxwood. We never have a shortage of boxwood, do we, Taylor? <laughs> I think we're just starting to get um, panicle hydrangeas. So that's what these guys are right here. So again, they're just kind of sticks right now, but you can prune them, no problem at this time of year. They don't even have to push new growth, but you can prune them down very, very low. Angela always says the size of a big basketball. So kind of envision that when you're pruning your panicle hydrangeas, also your tree hydrangeas, because those are panicles as well. We kind of find a shady spot over here. So now we're by the low mounding arbs. So like the Rheingold arborvitaes you see here, this is their winter color, um, but they'll start to kind of shed and that they'll kind of green up a little bit, um, peach up, get a little bit brighter. Um, there's a couple of little small bird's nest spruce over here as well. Just nice little evergreen additives that you can, um, you know, put anywhere in the landscape, but more arborvitae. Um, on this side as well. This is your gold mob cypress. Great plant, again, for, you know, winter color all through the seasons. It basically always looks like this. It can grow a little bit taller, get kind of a cone shape, but you can keep it cut very low. As that new leader comes out, you just cut it right down to the base of foliage and you've got a nice low mound. We have to say hello to the hellebores. And of course the hellebores are also um, known as Lenten Rose, and we've talked about them a bunch of times, but check out all the beautiful colors and varieties. Um, lots of new growth and buds coming out of these plants right now, um, but this is their prime time. They love it, and they're actively blooming right now, but we were talking about how long their flowers last on the plants. So you have beautiful color in the landscape, usually part shade to shady spots is where they like to be. Um, but you can put them in full sun as long as you keep the area around them moist. Um, but they will bloom and their flowers last and dry on the stems. So you have color from them March through June, July sometimes. Um, so they really are a long lasting, just attractive perennial, deer resistant as well and bunny resistant. So they're phenomenal. We love them. There are lots of options in the houseplant area, not only seasonal options, things like, um, you know, your, your springtime bloomers. And we talked about the bulbs and the pansies before, but in houseplants, lots of color is arriving. You've got things like um, citrus trees, obviously, are coming in. They're starting to bloom. They're looking absolutely gorgeous, but you've got all this spring color. So I'm going to show you some other things here on the carts. They haven't even gotten unloaded yet. So it's kind of nice to look over everything. So this is your Easter cacti. This is a great plant. It's just like your Christmas cacti, very similar, except when we look at the leaf bracts here, they're not as pointy, okay? So that's really the only difference is the leaf there. Flowers virtually the same, but they do really, really well. This is a great house plant, especially uh, around pets and children. So just keep that in mind. Lots of orchids coming in, but they're here all the time. But check out these cyclamen. Oh my gosh. Look at these huge flowers. Remember with cyclamen, they love to be cool, cool windowsills, no problem. And try to keep their bulb that's in the pot dry. So oftentimes we'll water them from the bottom in a saucer, just place them in a saucer and put the water in. They love that. We haven't seen these in a while. 
How about the Gerbera daisies? This is a great air purifying house plant. It can also be planted outside when it gets a little bit warmer in May. Um, but boy, these are, these are wonderful for indoors. Um, like I said, great air cleaner, just great plant, colorful plant. Got the doubled Calancho or what we call Calendiva. You can call it Calancoe if you want to. Um, here's a yellow that's showing a little bit more color. But these are succulent plants, flowering succulents, so they really don't need a lot of care. They just need a sunny window or a sunny spot. And then watering can be even watering, even moisture, all the way to the dry side. Lots of foliage plants, obviously. Prayer plants, of course. Beautiful pothos. This is a silver pothos here. Snake plants. I love the little uh, polka dot plants, hypoestes. Look at, they're so fun. And then down below, we've got like a Swiss cheese plant down here. And then also the gardenias. The gardenias are starting to bud up really, really nicely. They'll be blooming here in a little bit. Oh, and this is one of Taylor's uh, favorites lately. This is your philodendron birkin. And look at the white striping in that foliage. It's just such a cool philodendron and it's super easy to take care of. Okay, I think we're gonna wrap it up in houseplants and there we go. We've also got everything you need for a lawn and garden. Lawn care is really, really important at this time of year. You can do a lot with the lawn. You can overseed, you can you know, repair bare spots, all those types of things. So do consider that. And also our uh, garden accents and our patio areas are just full to the brim, so come and see us soon.